Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone's feeling revived after all that coffee because uh, we had some quite, uh, quite alarming uh, presentations earlier on. So um, a bit of a change of, um, of direction. So I'm not going to talk about psych psychological risks. I'm going to be talking about physical risks now. Um, so thank you very much for staying in the room. Um, the other point is um, I love, my background is engineering. So I've only been at Rosper for 15 years. But before that, I was an engineer. So I love numbers. I love evidence. And that's very much what drives a lot of the work that we do today. Um, and I'd just like to start off by just helping everyone think in terms of when was the last time that you as an individual ended up in hospital as a result of an accident? And if you just, I'm not going to ask you to volunteer what happened because sometimes these events are embarrassing. But a lot of the statistics I'm going to be sharing with you are represented within this room. So we have accidents regularly. Some of us have them more regularly than others, um, but they are so commonplace that to a certain extent they are belittled by certain elements of the media. Um, but actually some accidents can be really quite traumatic, life-changing and actually life-ending. So 14,000 people lose their lives every year because of uh, accidental injuries. Um, so that's the very hard side of, um, of uh, the, uh, the subject. Now, if I've got the technology right, that's good. Um, right, uh, very kind to introduce Rosper as a big charity. Rosper's actually quite a small charity. Uh, it's only... Big and hard. <laughs> big and hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's only 120 of us. Uh, but we have about 8,000 volunteers, mainly focused on, the volunteers focus on advanced driving. Um, but the 120 staff basically do all sorts of things covering workplace, road safety, leisure safety, and home safety. Um, my big challenge as the chief executive is to balance the fact that we generate income by selling training in workplace and road safety. But actually, the charitable challenge is in terms of what we do in our spare time in home leisure. Um, but... That's our vision. Um, so visions are very aspirational. We would love life to be free from serious accidental injury. And that's because everyone has different definition of what life is all about. Life for some is uh, going whitewater rafting, cycling uh, around Hyde Park, or just playing with five-year-olds with, with their youngsters and making sure that basically no one gets, gets injured. Um, Life is worth celebrating, and accidental injuries can actually make a major negative impact on people's lives. What we try to do is be very engaging and empowering. So we've gone for a little uh, change in terms of our logo. And just to clarify, if you remember, the Rosper logo used to be a square, and it was a stamp of approval almost. Now we're trying to be much more conversational. So the idea is that we've got... Uh, it's a conversation between Rosper and all our friends and stakeholders. And we have a lot of uh, stakeholders that we work with. Um, we've been going for uh, uh, over 100 years, 103 years. Um, this is a bit of a party we had at Buckingham Palace, which um, thank, uh, uh, under the auspices of uh, our patron, Her Majesty the Queen. So very proud of um, our royal patronage. And I think everyone who had the chance to take part in that uh, event really had a fantastic time. So it's great to celebrate the fantastic work that a lot of people do in our general field. Um, if we think of Rosper as basically a little pebble, so 120, it's tiny compared to some of the charities such as HUK. Um, so it's a major charities um, within both the UK and further afield. But if we can just drop a pebble and we can actually get a, almost a tsunami effect, of a ripple effect, then that's basically what Rosper tries to do time and time again. Um, and it's so hard in the area of prevention to actually demonstrate the effect you're having. So this is my best effort. So I, I warned you that I was going to be sharing some numbers and graphs and so on. This is my representation of what's happened since the 1960s in terms of the lives the cumulative lives saved in terms of road safety and workplace safety. There's been a huge amount of the three E's of prevention, ed education, engineering, and enforcement. And they together have saved the lives of approximately 125,000 people. Now that is a fantastic achievement. 
That's just in the UK. Um, so if you then replicate that across Europe, we're looking at millions of people's lives. So that, frankly, we take for granted. We take for granted that the roads are safe, that the car is safe, that the workplace environment is safe. Um, but, and there's always a big but, isn't there? So whilst this has been doing really well, um, what's been going on in our leisure time and in our homes? And that's where we have a far more fragmented approach. So we know we have an ageing population. And we know with cognitive impairment, physical impairment, we are much more vulnerable to having accidents. Um, but what's actually happening in terms of the concerted effort that we had back in the 60s and 50s in terms of things like the Health and Safety at Work Act, in terms of all the various road safety legislation, where's the parallel to tackling what is becoming a major accident problem, um, which is a huge issue in terms of families, the NHS, and to a less extent employers. Because if you have an elderly relative who has a serious fall at home, that has a massive impact on um, members of the family and working age uh, population who potentially have to take time off work. So this is actually not just a hidden problem, it's actually a big physical problem, but it's actually not necessarily measured by employers. And again, going back to engineering, if you measure things, you can manage things, but this is a very unmeasured and unmanaged uh, challenge. Anyway, we put together um, a strategy use it with a fantastic input from our stakeholders under the leadership of Stephen Dorrell, and we put this thing together. This is the National Accident Prevention Strategy for England. Now, the reason we chose and focused on England is that from our perspective, England feels like 140 different countries. So in this day and age where we're feeling, you know, that worried about what's happening to the Celtic nations and Scottish independence and all, actually, the England itself is a remarkably uh, disconnected um, set of regions. And health inequalities are absolutely massive within uh, just one country within the United Kingdom. Um, but within, um, within uh, uh, our strategy, the first thing we looked at was all the evidence. So basically, the very clear statement that accidents are a leading cause of um, um, both um, loss of life but also life-changing um, incidents. Would it surprise everyone to learn that accidents are the leading cause of life up to age 39. So if, if anyone up to the age of 39 dies, chances are they've died as a result of an accident. Now how often do we hear that played in the media? We never hear it. Um, but actually in terms of hard numbers, accidents in later life, age 65 plus, are far, far bigger as a, as a problem in terms of the NHS coping with people who have a tumble downstairs, end up with a hip fracture, but actually they've got multiple comorbidities, so um, they're a major challenge in terms of how the NHS responds and copes. Um, what we're trying to do with this strategy is to show that <coughs> um, accidents are preventable, and also that we've got 25 recommendations, <coughs> and these recommendations are actually fairly straightforward, and they're all about coordination, really, coordination of the private sector, public sector and also the third sector, the charitable sector. So where we've got an alignment um, in terms of our agendas, then potentially there is huge opportunity for us to collaborate, cooperate and so on. Um, but just before I go into some collaborations, I just saw, thought I'd share with you another couple of graphs. <coughs> so does the UK feel nice and safe? Yes. Yes? Excellent. Right. The good news is that this line um, is what's happening in terms of road fatalities. So we've got a fantastic success story in terms of how much safer Britain's roads have become over the last um, <coughs> certainly 40 years, if not the last 10 years. <coughs> this is quite worrying in terms of the way in which things have plateaued out since um, basically um, uh, cuts in... Um, in um, road safety engineering, policing, and so on. Um, so there's real concerns in terms of whether or not all that progress has been arrested and whether or not it's a temporary blip or whether or not things might actually start going in the wrong direction. But this, for me, is much more worrying. So the, the line 
at the top is actually what's going on in terms of fatal accidents in home and leisure. So that is rising, um, and it's rising pretty fast. <coughs> this graph, so this is fatalities. This one is disability, so it's measuring disability. And it's the same sort of pattern. So again, road-related disability is improving. Good. Uh, home and leisure is <coughs> it's not, not as bad as the fatality one, but it's, 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 it should be coming down, but it's not. This is chronic injuries. So this is slow accidents. This is poor posture, poor manual handling, damaging your back, ending up for the next 10 years with a real problem in terms of discomfort and having to use paracetamol or physiotherapy to try to get through the day. Repetitive stress injury, um, all sorts of musculoskeletal challenges in terms of um, uh, what people do to themselves. This area has a major impact on, again, productivity of the UK economy. So where people of my age, for example, um, bend down, hurt their back, off work for a couple of weeks, that's a major cost to your employer. Um, quite apart from in later life, um, you suddenly become completely dependent on members of your family around you. Um, a few sort of headlines in terms of um, um, uh, the accident burden or the burden of injury. Um, so I've mentioned fatalities. Um, so out of the UK's 14,000 fatal accidents, approximately 2,000 are road and work related. 5%, so 12,000, are home and leisure related. So um, when you go back home, you're actually heading to the most dangerous environment you can be in. Um, and also in terms of A&E, um, so that's in terms of fatal accidents. In terms of A&E, we keep hearing in the media that, we're, that, that our hospitals are coping with ever-growing record levels of A&E attendances. Well, about a quarter of those A&E attendances are due to accidents. Um, so that's um, about six million of uh, six million um, accidents a year are handled by our, our hospitals in terms of treatment, treatment, and about forty percent of those, so about two and a half million, are actually home accidents. Um, and let's have a look, further look. So this is. I'm sorry, I'm really going to subject you to this one. This basically shows accidents in terms of where they happen and at what ages. Um, so the red area at the bottom, which accounts for about 40% of all the accidental injuries that are treated by our hospitals, that is home. So even at its lowest point, home is actually bigger, apart from the leisure area, which is the green one, home is actually the most dangerous the biggest area, of the biggest source of accidental injury right the way through our lives. If you're a toddler, one to two year olds, I know that's not the subject of today's meeting, um, but toddlers are remarkably accident um, prone. So the average toddler ends up visiting A&E every, every six months. Um, for some, it's a lot more frequent than that. Um, but basically, if you think about toddlers, they have so many things going against them in a sense. You've, they're just learning to walk, big heavy head on a relatively weak body. They're just getting used to um, coping with walking and they're inquisitive, they're copying their parents, they're copying their older siblings. Everything goes in their mouths. It's remarkable that we make it into childhood and then uh, into adulthood. Um, where things start going wrong, so we're at our safest at traditional retirement age. So we know what hurts and we develop coping strategies. But as physical impairment, et cetera, um, takes its toll, that's where we have our accident rates in our homes, in the privacy of our own homes, it really starts to rocket upwards. Um, so let's have a quick look at what sort of injuries um, we sustain. So this is looking at the 65 plus year old population. And frankly, from my point of view, the elephant in the room is falls. We tend to talk about all sorts of other things, like bumping into each other and poisonings and um, lacerations, you know, using the, the carving knife or whatever. But actually, 
having a tumble uh, accounts for about 80% of the hospital admissions um, as a result of an accident. So falls prevention is by far, as far as I'm concerned, for over 65 years, the biggest priority of them all. So anything we can do to prevent falls, frankly, is going to be beneficial to individuals, to their families, but also the NHS. Um, this is just a sort of little reminder that has anyone used the th uh, something called the global burden of disease? Right. It's, it's a great source. Oh, source from nodding there. It's a great source of information for those of you who haven't. Um, it takes a bit of playing around to, to get what you're looking for. This just looks at on the right we've got ladies, females. On the left we've got men. Um, we've got the various countries within uh, the British Isles. Um, say first is Ireland. Anyone from Ireland? No? Okay. Um, most of you are probably from England. Uh, England's pretty average. I suppose that's because the population tends to skew things. But then, anyone from Scotland? No, Scotland is, is the most dodgy part of the British Isles. <laughs> um, so what you have here is the dark green area is, is road-related um, uh, hospital admissions due to accident. The lighter green is home, basically home accidents. So um, both men and women in Scotland have much higher accident rates due to falls um, <coughs> in their own homes than elsewhere in the, in the country. And that's, that in itself is puzzling. I haven't got the answer to that. Um, maybe there are things like minimum pricing alcohol that will make a contribution, a positive contribution. Don't know. Um, but um, uh, certainly what's pleasing from my point of view is that um, um, in Northern Ireland, we've been doing a lot of home accident prevention work through the Home Accident Prevention in Northern <coughs> Ireland um, partnerships. And on at face value, it looks as though Northern Ireland is a little bit safer than England. Um, so long may it continue. Um, a couple of things I'd just like to share with you in terms of uh, what so... so okay, that we've, we've established what the accident burden is. Um, we did a three-year program. It's come to the end of its funding now. We're uh, funded by the Department of Health called Stand Up, Stay Up. Um, what we're trying to do was to test various best practice solutions. So there's lots of um, academic um, work. But we tried to test best practice solutions across, um, across England. We had 10 local partners. And the aim was to see what was the most effective way of preventing the first fall. So falls being a bit like a lot of other medical conditions, once you have your first fall, the chance of having the next one just keeps on rising. Um, so what we were trying to do was to support local partners, local initiatives. Um, oh, is that me? Oh, the telly. The telly's coming on. Um, supporting um, <coughs> local, local partners, running local events, and training both practitioners and also uh, volunteers. And what we, what we managed to achieve as a result um, was basically raising awareness local decision makers of the value of false prevention as a local strategic priority. So it's when there's so much noise, there's so much coming at you from lots of different directions in terms of what you do with a pound of taxpayers' money, the subject of something like false prevention can easily drop off um, uh, but things like balance classes, Zumba dancing for 95-year-olds, anything that gets people out of the house, gets them engaged, active, um, enjoying each other's company, but being physically active is hugely beneficial in terms of false prevention. Um, so it doesn't have to be complicated or, or high-tech, but there has to be a catalyst to make things happen. Um, so that was one of the main conclusions from this piece of work. Um, I'm just going to share with you uh, some posh pictures of um, nice homes, flats, houses, and so on. Has anyone come across the Barclay Group? Excellent. Big house built primarily in, uh, in London, but there's, we're going further afield. Very prestigious, very nice. They are um, very keen on extremely high standards of health and safety within their workplaces. <coughs> so they've won our top award for occupational safety and health um, a few years ago and they were keen to try to extend 
their working practices beyond the workplace into the local community and also into the products they're offering the, um, the, um, uh, the public. Um, <coughs> so what we did with them um, was we did a sort of four-stage program. Um, two elements of it were to do with education, um, so that's these two, so advice for vulnerable residents, so mainly older people, and then advice in terms of child safety, so things like keeping uh, toxic substances out of reach. Um, but up here, we've got two programs that are primarily engineering related. And by engineering related, what we did was to look at the all that data, the, uh, the accident data. Um, would you like to see it again? <laughs> uh, so we went through all the accident data. Again, addressing the elephant in the room, so lots of focus on falls. And <coughs> the challenge for, um, for Barclay was to see what design modifications, what specification changes that cost either nothing or cost very little could be built into the design of the next generation of their homes and literally transform and almost eliminate certain categories of home accidents. So potentially this was a great way from our point of view making people's homes as safe as let's say the top um, Euro NCAP rated uh, motor car. So if you think back to, uh, if you compare let's say the traditional Mini which I learned to drive in compared to the latest Volvo, uh, the chance of survival in one vehicle as opposed to the other is radically different. And that's where the Euro NCAP rating came in. What we're trying to do in a much more tentative way is doing something similar in terms of uh, house design. So where house builders have gone out of their way to include features, so for example, falls in the bathrooms, there is no minimum in terms of building regulations, there's no minimum standard in terms of the slip resistance of flooring in bathrooms. So someone falling as a result of just slipping on a wet surface could be easily prevented by having a minimum slip resistance specified at the point uh, of uh, either buying in the tiles or even at the design stage. <coughs> Same with staircases. Um, so staircases, there is a British standard on staircase design. It was launched about nine years ago. Can I take any guesses as to how many house builders actually use this British standard? Spot on. Not one. Really shocking, but actually it's understandable because the staircase design is, it includes, for example, parallel, parallel handrails, so you've got twice the chance of catching yourself if you do fall. It specifies the, um, the height and depth of, the, of each step. Um, so basically you've got a big enough step for someone who's got big feet uh, and it's not as steep as some um, staircases, for example. Um, and basically it's making it much, much safer. But my goodness, uh, when house builders are trying to squeeze as many properties into as small as plot as possible, having a nice big... Uh, safe staircase is not the highest priority. So big challenge in terms of, uh, for example, uh, trying to get something that's cost effective but actually delivers the results we're looking for. Um, so we'll be launching this, uh, let me just check the date, uh, we'll be launching this in Westminster on the 28th of November. Um, and I very much hope that when you next buy a home, that you'll be looking for your own cap. So whether or not it's a Rosper Platinum, which is the best standard, or a gold or a, or a silver. At least the silver is a bit better than just standard building rates. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Any questions? Or, or maybe I've overrun that. So, sorry, is the question in terms of is, let's say, a platinum house safer? And le uh, uh, how will you, um, when you, when you buy a yeah. house, how will you monitor how safe those homes are going to be? 
The unfair advantage we have with Barclay is that they tend to um, uh, basically manage whole estates. Um, so, uh, and actually a lot of their properties I think are leasehold. Um, so, okay, there, there's concerns in terms of leasehold as opposed to freehold. But there's a much greater in interest for in terms of Barclays looking after, well, one of their ambitions actually is for people to be happier <laughs> in their homes rather than in someone else's home. Where, frankly, where I want to be is where we have, let's say, Builders Council, the NHBC, um, already they're specifying our framework to all house builders across the UK. And that's where, frankly, it's going to be a leap of faith, where what we'd hope to see uh, is people getting in the Platinum Home and the Gold one. But this is, this is the classic conundrum in terms of access and promotion, in terms of um, yeah, because you've got two handrails, you've halved the chance of having an accident. It makes sense, logically, but actually, where's the hard, hard evidence? Because if someone's rushing to get the door and they're carrying a tea tray, for example, they haven't got a spare hand to hold anything. But at least if people are made aware of, of um, <coughs> how to prevent and how to keep themselves safe, there's a better chance that um, they're going to have fewer accidents. 